All right, to do number 10 in this MAC 2233 Applied Calculus test, test 5 on Chapter 4, in order to do problem number 10, find the area under the graph of y equals 2x minus x squared over the interval from 0 to 2. So if we just look at the picture, we know it's an upside-down parabola. So if we um, go to y equals and type in 2x minus x squared, and I chose to zoom square or decimal number 4, and it's kind of a zoom in, and that's nice because we're just looking... We're looking at the interval from 0 to 2. And so those are the two zeros of the function. So when we're trying to find the area from 0 to 2, from 0 to 2, to find this area, it, the exact area is the integral. So to find area, you just integrate from low limit to upper limit, whatever the function is, 2x minus x squared, and then you, um, uh, with respect to x, 2x. So we can break this up that the area is going to be the integral of 2x dx minus the integral of x squared dx. And then the The lower limit is 0 and the upper limit 2. So to integrate 2x, we can bring the 2 in front and just look at x and say it's to the 1 plus 1 power, or 2, and then minus, for x squared, we're going to do x to the 2 plus 1, or 3 power. So x to the 2 plus 1 over the 2 plus 1. Normally we would put plus c if it's indefinite, but when you have a definite low limit and upper limit, then we don't have to put plus c. We just are going to fill in the 2 into this function and then subtract that which we get when we fill in the 0. So let's clean up the function and just call this x squared minus 1 third x to the third. And so now what's left is just to fill in 2 first. So 2 squared minus 1 third times 2 to the third is what we get when we fill in 2. And then we subtract that which we get when we fill in a 0. So just remember that you put the um, top number in first, goes first, top number first, bottom number last. And we just subtract those values. So when you square 2, you get 4. 2 to the third is 8. 1 third times 8 is 8 thirds. And then we're going to minus. When you fill in a 0, this just becomes 0 minus 0, or just 0. So 4 minus 8 thirds is the same as 12 thirds minus 8 thirds. And that's 4 thirds. And you can just use your calculator if you're weak in um, the fraction area. Okay, so letter D is our answer to number 10. On number 11, we're evaluating the definite integral, and we want this 5 square root x to fit one of these integration formulas. And so we're going to, f 5 square root x, number 1 is whenever you see a radical you should rewrite it as x to an exponential power. Expon sorry, write it in exponential form, x to a rational power, x to the one-half. And so the 5 will go in front, and when you integrate x to the one-half, you're just going to use the power rule and say that it's just x to the power plus 1, one-half plus 1, and put the whole thing over the power plus 1. So that is the integration, and then we're going to put a plus c. So, oh, excuse me, that we would put plus c if we did not have these uh, lower and upper limits, but since we have the over, up, lower and upper limits, we'll just put the limits on here from 0 to 9. So what we have to do is fill in the 9 first, 
and then subtract that which we get when we fill in the zero. Okay, so let me clean this up. This is 5x to the 1 half plus 2 halves is 3 halves. And instead of putting this all on top of 3 halves, instead of dividing by 3 halves, I'm going to choose to multiply by 2 thirds. And so in the end, we have 10 thirds x to the 3 halves power. And now we just have to put in our upper limit first and then minus our lower limit. Now the 10 thirds, if you want, you can just factor the 10 thirds to the front and just let that sit in front of the, the difference that we get when we plug in 9 first and then we say minus and then we plug in the 0 in for x, 0 to the 3 halves. So 9 to the 3 halves, you could do this on your calculator, but this means take the square root of 9, and that's a 3, and then cube it. 3 times 3 times 3. So this ends up being 27. And 0 to any power is just 0. So 27 minus 0 is just 27. So in the end, we have 10 thirds times 27. And if you want, you can just put this whole thing in your calculator and do it that way. So we get that the 3 cancels into 27 9 times, and so in the end we're just multiplying 10 times 9, 90, and it's on top of a 1 times 1, 1. So we, we don't bother with the over 1. We just leave it as uh, 90. So that answer choice is C. Okay, sorry about getting a little messy here, but I think you're getting the idea. So on number 12... We are integrating, now again, constants can move to the front, and then what we see is that we are integrating a clean 1 over x dx, and 1 over x dx, when you integrate that, is just natural log x. So this is just going to be natural log, absolute value of x, if we want to get picky about it, and this has the 10 in front of it. And now we're just going to evaluate this. And again, the constant multiplier can just wait in front 10 times, ln of x. And we're going to plug in the upper limit e first. So we'll do ln of e. Absolute value of um, e is just e because e is 2.7, roughly. Minus, and then we do natural log and we plug in the 1. So... Natural log of e, you can use your calculator, but it's just, that's saying what power do we bring e up to to create e, and that's just a 1. So this ends up being 10 on the outside. The natural log of e is just 1, and the natural log of 1 is saying e to what power is 1, and the answer to that is it's the 0 power. So, so the answer here is this is 0. So 1 minus 0 is 1, and so 10 times 1 is just 10. So that's why the answer to number 12 is D. On number 13, we don't have a product rule in integration. So we're just going to FOIL this. 2x times 5x is 10x squared. Then we have minus 2x plus 15x minus 3. And so in the end, this integral from 0 to 3 simplifies to be 10x squared plus 13x minus 3 dx. So we're just going to integrate this one term at a time. So the 10 will wait, and on the x we'll take power plus 1 over the power plus 1 plus 13 in front. X is to the first, so we go X to the 1 plus 1 over that new power. And then minus 3, to do the antiderivative of a constant, we just put constant times X. And since we have, a, this is a definite integral, and we're going to evaluate this from 0 to 3. 
So that means plug in 3 first into this whole thing and then say minus and plug in the 0. So when we plug in the 3, I'll just write this out. Now, by the way, we can't factor this to the front because it's not a common factor to all to every single term. So we'll leave the 10 involved. We'll replace x with the 3. We'll leave the 13 alone. And we'll replace, again, x with 3 is the first thing we do. And then we say, I didn't leave myself enough room. I'm just going to say minus 3 times 3. So whatever this number yields, we're going to subtract what happens when we fill in a 0. So when we fill in a 0, take 0 cube over 3, that's just 0. 13 times 0 squared over 2, that's going to be another 0. And 3 times 0 is another 0. So it doesn't always work out to be 0, but often when you plug in 0, often it does, but not always. You have to check. Okay. So 3 times 3, 9 times 3, 27 over 3 is 9. So this whole thing turns into uh, 90. And on this one, we have 13 times the square of 3 is 9 halves. So 13 times 9 halves. I'm just going to leave that for now. 13 times 9 halves. And then minus 9. So it's just going to be easiest if you just use your calculator and so we just have to figure out what is 90 plus 13 times 9 halves subtract 9. So 90 plus 13 times 9 halves subtract 9 is 139.5 or under math we can convert to fraction and just make it 279 over 2. So Formal mathematics prefers a fraction over the 139.5 decimal, except if we're graphing or doing story problems. So in this case, our answer choice, answer C, was depending on the answer being in fraction form.